So the next thing we are going to install is the uh, Qt framework um, because it uh, also contains the compiler that we're going to use for our uh, toolchain. So uh, let's go ahead and do this. You can find uh, uh, the Qt framework at qt.io. And when you go there, you get the uh, uh, introduction on what it is. It's a cross-platform C++ framework for very many different uh, things, including graphical user interfaces and uh, networking and so on. So it's a very, very um, powerful framework, um, not unlike uh, .NET, um, but this one, of course, is uh, purely C++. So we want to uh, download, uh, of course. It comes with uh, uh, commercial and open source licenses um, attached. So when we uh, scroll down here, we have various choices. We want to go open source um, and uh, click on that. Then uh, we'll get a uh, fairly lengthy text on the obligations when you're an open source user, which is perfectly fine in our case. And you're uh, definitely encouraged to uh, read all this so uh, that you know uh, when you are in good standing license-wise, but um, ultimately we want to just install um, the components that uh, we're interested in. So we're going to download the Qt installer first. And uh, then uh, it should be auto-detecting your operating system. Um, and then we'll download the installer, which is not that big. The framework itself is fairly big, but uh, the installer isn't, uh, if you can see that. So we can open up the installer. And uh, now we have uh, uh, different choices to, uh, to make. So um, um, as with many of these things, uh, we need a um, account, in this case a QT account. So once I'm logged in, it uh, checks my open source license and uh, it uh, gives me the opportunity here to make sure that I understand what the ramifications of the open source license are. Go to uh, the uh, open source Qt setup and uh, now it's going to download the uh, meta information on what versions are available and uh, with uh, which compilers and everything like that. And we'll see um, once this is done what choices we'll have to make. And these will be very specific for our particular toolchain. Um, the fact that there are uh, many different viable compilers on Windows makes this somewhat non trivial. It's definitely easier on uh, Linux and Mac OS, where all you'll ever have to deal with is uh, CLAN and uh, GCC. So, Uh, we're going to disable sending uh, usage statistics as user to keep network load low. Uh, default place for installation is uh, perfectly fine. And now we have our different choices here. So uh, if you look at the uh, developer and uh, designer tools here, um, there is a IDE that uh, comes with Qt, it's called Qt Creator. We're going to install this nevertheless. It's a good fallback to have um, if all you are interested in is pure Qt development. Uh, and then some of the uh, debugging tools are nice. Um, but uh, we also need to install the compilers that we uh, want to use. Um, and uh, because with uh, C++, uh, the application binary interface is compiler specific, so we have to match compiler versions and uh, so we will choose uh, right now uh, the minimalist GNU system for Windows or MinGW in version 7.3 and 64 bits. This is the compiler we will be using. Uh, you see down there that there is uh, already an installation um, um, option for CMake but we have already installed CMake separately so we don't need to download this. But this compiler is essential for us. 
um, you can manually install MinGW and then the main problem there is keeping compiler versions synchronized and uh, Qt comes with a complete compiler installation and uh, our tools down the road will be able to find this particular tool chain. So we will be um, just fine with this particular compiler. Then when it comes to the actual download of Qt, we're going to go for uh, the latest release. And uh, there you see that uh, they provide pre-compiled versions for um, various compilers and configurations. And here we will have to match MinGW 7.3 with 64 bits as well. Otherwise, we cannot compile software because the versions of the compiler don't, doesn't, don't match. So, and, uh, but that is that. So we have uh, everything um, that uh, we need. And we agree, of course, to the open source license. And Qt is uh, perfectly fine with uh, in the program menu, and uh, then we are ready to install. And now the system downloads it. It's a pretty large download, a um, couple of um, hundred megabytes up to uh, possibly a gigabyte. So this is going to take a while. So we're done, and uh, we don't need to launch Qt Creator. We just finish the installation, and that's it. Again, <clears throat> what we should be seeing now is a couple of programs under Qt, including uh, the uh, uh, Qt Creator. Uh, more interesting. Uh, for us, however, is actually the assistant. Uh, that is a online documentation that comes with Qt that uh, gives you a very good overview over what Qt is, what it can do, and uh, how this all works. So uh, you are invited to uh, walk around this thing and uh, learn. We will mostly in our classes using the signal slot mechanism, some uh, of the uh, graphical user interface um, um, tools, and uh, uh, most notably also the um, uh, testing in 
interface Q test, which is actually done here. So, um, but that's it on QT. As I said, it's a uh, fairly large download, but the advantage is that we now have a tightly integrated um, development and test framework that comes with a compiler that we know to be working. So next up uh, will be the installation of uh, our um, um, ID.